This lecture deals with Kennedy's foreign policy, specifically the Cuban Missile Crisis, which is his most significant uh, piece of foreign policy in the area, uh, or the event that really scares Americans most uh, during his presidency. It's pretty much the scariest event we have. So during this Cuban Missile Crisis, we obviously have the leader of the United States being uh, President Kennedy, um, the leader of Cuba being Fidel Castro, and the leader of the Soviet Union, uh, Nikita Khrushchev, being the major players. So what happens in October of 1962? So we send reconnaissance uh, flights over Cuba after the Cuban Revolution in 1959. Um, they go communist, and we get obviously very concerned since they are so close to us. So it shows concrete evidence as we're flying these reconnaissance miss missions of a missile assembly in Cuba. Um, their transporters and missile-ready tents where fueling and maintenance could take place. So they're building some sort of missile. We're assuming what it is, but we don't necessarily know for sure. So we fly low altitude flights on the same area, and we see a, uh, a preparation area. We see um, all these different things. And the, the pilot who actually took this shot was flying at an altitude of about 250 sp uh, feet at the speed of sound. So our technology has improved in our uh, planes, but also in our photography for us to be able to see this. So we see different things, and it's clearly getting more and more obvious that the um, Cubans are getting these uh, what they call ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, that can reach the United States if launched, so they don't be, have to be uh, dropped like the missiles or the, like the bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So we see um, a surface-to-air missile pattern provided by additional evidence of the Russians arming the Cubans. We knew this was Russians because it looks like them, but it also is the technology that the Cubans didn't have, and who else would be supplying a communist nation very close to the United States besides the Soviet Union. So we prepare for war along with the Soviet Union. The U.S. placed a blockade around Cuba and warned the Soviet Union, who were bringing more and more supplies over Cuba, not to break through the blockade. The Soviets sent their naval fleet to protect Cuba. So we have the Americans blockading Cuba and the Soviet Union sending a naval fleet. We have our U.N. ambassador, Adley Stevenson, shows aerial photos of the U.N., um, or to the UN of these missile sites um, in November of 1962, showing, listen, we have evidence of this, so it's not us doing this. Okay, We need the world support and the world to kind of question what the Soviet Union is doing in ratcheting up the fear of the nuclear war. So, this shows the range that these uh, missiles would have. Obviously, it is uh, about 1,100 miles, so they could hit most American cities on the East Coast. They could hit Washington, D.C., so there's an obvious reason to be very afraid of what's going on. You can see the ships are... are um, naval bases uh, on Guantanamo Bay and in Key West, and, you know, this is ratcheting up the major issues between the United States and Soviet Union. So the crisis developed as the U.S. demanded the Soviet Union dismantle the missiles, um, or the U.S. would invade Cuba. Again, this is after the Cuban uh, the Bay of Pigs invasion, which was failed. So we are threatening to not only block the Soviet Union, but invade their ally in Cuba. So um, we set up what would be our invasion uh, from Puerto Rico and Nicaragua. Um, we set up a blockade to get ready um, to fight if necessary. What uh, most of the world didn't know here, but the Soviet Union did, is that we had uh, already put missiles in Turkey back under Truman um, or around when we helped Turkey uh, during the uh, Marshall Plan and the Truman Doctrine days when we assisted Turkey. So we had kind of ratcheted this up several years ago, but uh, so the, the Cuban Missile Crisis is kind of a reaction to that. You can see here that Kennedy is meeting with uh, his chiefs of staff and the Army and Navy and our Air Force to talk about what might be happening uh, in Cuba and how we might react. So out of this, eventually, the Soviet Union blinks and they agree to dismantle these sites in Cuba um, and get rid of the missiles. Eventually, the United States, even though it's not part of the original deal, um, remove the, our uh, bombs and missiles from Turkey, which was not part of the original deal. It's kind of an act of good faith. Since we got so close to nuclear war, we figured we really need to back this off uh, between the United States and the Soviet Union. So it is very close to war. If the Soviet Union had broken that blockade, we are probably going to war, uh, definitely going to war in Cuba, and possibly with the Soviet Union, which would have ended in nuclear war. 
So after realizing how close we come to nuclear war, the monster must be must never be released, and we vowed to uh, have better communication bet directly between the United States president and the leader of the Soviet Union. We actually, in 1963, find, signed the first nuclear arms limitation treaty, uh, limiting the number and where they could be tested um, to try to you know stop the ratcheting up. So this is a big win for the United States, but really it's a win for you know the people of the world because we do not launch all-out nuclear war, which was something that was a very real possibility at this time.